Hello and welcome back to Producing Music. My name is Nam Weary and boy do I have a special video for you. Today we're talking all about mid-tempo. This video will be a comprehensive guide similar to my UKG video where I'll be making a track from the ground up and showing you step by step what you can do to make insane mid-tempo tracks. Let's get right into it. I'm going to cover six sections of mid-tempo music, and I'll timestamp each one in the description so you can find the section you need. The drums in mid-tempo generally center around a fat kick and snare, accompanied by metallic perk sounds, hi-hats, and foleys. For this track, start by setting the BPM to 110 and add a four on the floor kick. You can optionally add an accent that creates a little more rhythm. To make it knock even more, I threw on a drum bus, cranked up the transient knob, and heavily EQ'd the top end to make it pop. From here, you can add a beefy snare, and something that I recommend is choosing two similar samples and alternating between them. This makes the track a little more exciting for the listener without them noticing the difference. To make the song sound a little more industrial, take a white noise sample and add a redux. Place the white noise stabs on each alternating snare like this. Hear how this changes the vibe of the drums instantly and adds a call and response pattern. Start by adding a 16th note hi-hat and side-chaining it to the kick. Additionally, find a metallic hi-hat sample and put it on every offbeat. After this step, find a ride, create two separate tracks, one pan to the left and one to the right, and alternate playing the sample between them. Group all the drums, put a compressor on them, and raise the attack to preserve the transients. Now this step is optional, but I like a little more smashed sound to my drums, so I added a glue compressor, used a soft clipper mode by two decibels, and lowered the volume directly after. Here's the exaggerated effect of the soft clipper, essentially cutting off any transients above a certain threshold and distorting the sound. Mid-tempo basses are beefy and distorted following a simple minor scale pattern, and in this section, I'll be making these two basses. I started with a serum preset I made a while back using FM from B and a little bit of noise to make it crunch. This sounds like this. The real magic happens in post-processing though. The first thing you'll want to do with mid-tempo basses is cut out all the low frequencies and make a separate sub bass as I've done here. Then all that's left to do is distort an EQ, distort an EQ, and just when you think you're done, distort an EQ again. For this process, split your sound up into low and high frequency bands. Most of the distortion will happen to the higher end because we don't want to mess up too much of the warm low tones. Add OTT, overdrive, and saturation to create a bunch of new harmonics. Then use an EQ to take out any harsh or muddy frequencies. Once you've done this, bounce the bass to audio so you can see what it looks like. This is helpful because sometimes it illuminates certain notes that don't hit as hard. Chop them up and replace them so the whole thing sounds more consistent. Then do the same glue compressor trick that we did to the drums earlier. This will smash the sound a little bit more and distort it slightly. One more EQ and the first bass is done. For the second bass, it's really simple. Just add Redux. This is how to get that grimy res bass sound. Redux adds sharp harmonics to the sound. So because of this, add a couple EQs to take out the mud and harshness. This is my personal preference, but I don't worry about phasing on this kind of bass because it makes it a little bit more alive, like it's breathing. See if you can hear this effect while it's isolated. At this point, the skeleton of the track is already in place, so we can just add some extra stuff to spice it up a little bit. Here are some ideas. Take some random glitch samples and add redux to them so they match the timbre of the main bass sounds. Drop them in the space between the bass notes so it fills up the drop. Take an atmosphere sample like this one and throw some more redux onto it to match the timbre again. You can use old cassette or vinyl samples as makeshift fills. Also add chance for a B section. Atmosphere and mid-tempo is dark and industrial, so for the break elements, use respaces, drones, and filtered synths. For this track, the heavy lifting comes from the sub bass and the drone. With only these two elements, it sets the tone for the whole track. This is what the drone sample I'm using. Kura has a bunch of great samples like this if you want to find more. When you have a good atmosphere set, add some sort of piano or synth sound. 
The goal for the atmosphere is to fill the entire frequency spectrum, so make sure your synth fills in the gaps the sub and drone leave in the mix. And just for fun, I decided to sample Morgan Freeman's iconic monologue from Shawshank Redemption, which fit the vibe surprisingly well. It's really important to give your songs an identity, so try and add an element like this that's unique and catches the listener's attention. Stupid kid. Stupid kid. In this section, I'm going to give three tips on how to make things interesting for the whole song. Start by adding drop variation. To keep the identity of the track intact, I suggest using the same bass sounds across each drop, but changing the melody. Secondly, you can add a bonus drop with a BPM change. For this track, I added a bonus third drop here, which I'll play at the end, but for the first two, I used the same bass sounds and did subtle melody changes just so it doesn't feel like it was copy-pasted. In addition to the drop structure, I recommend adding a bridge between drops, all the drums disappear and the melody builds up cinematically and with pitch bends before entering the build. The most important mixing principle to keep in mind for mid-tempo is a balanced low end. I'll show you a couple tips to make it sound professional. When the sub is too loud, it takes up a lot of headroom, making the other sounds not pop as much. Play your bass and sub at the same time and slowly raise the sub volume until you can feel it, but not too high that you can hear it. A good tool you can use to test this is a frequency display. Try to create a mix with a little dip around the muddy frequencies while keeping balanced lows and highs. If you look at professional mixes, they follow this almost perfectly. These are four mixes from myself, Diplo, Knock2, and Blue Jay. Secondly, create a perfect sidechain using a volume shaper plugin. I'm using the stock utility plugin from Ableton to achieve this by automating the gain here. Take your kick sample and create a curve that inversely matches the volume of the kick. This creates a seamless transition from the kick into the bass, allowing each element of the low end to breathe on its own. To hear what's going on, put an EQ on the master and cut every frequency above 200 hertz to hear exactly what your low end sounds like. And finally, for the mastering chain, it's just the usual EQ balancing and limiting to about 8 LUFS. I really appreciate it if you made it this far in the video. As always, if you learned something or just enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe if you can. It really means the world to small channels. And if you like what you hear, this is from my new song, Stupid Kid, which is out on all platforms now. But without further ado, let's listen to the final track. Committed to a terrible crime.